Hello, cheese lovers. This is Jill Erber, Cheese Teak Cheese Lady, with my nine-year-old child. And tonight, we're going to be doing a cheese board. We're going to be doing three cheeses tonight, not surprisingly. We often do three cheeses because it gives you enough cheese to have a good selection and everyone can find something they like. But not so much that people are like, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming, I'm intimidated. So three, super great. The only thing that our cheeses have in common this evening are that they were chosen by my nine-year-old child. So we were at Cheese Teak together today, and we looked in the case, and I said, Liberty, what cheeses should we do for our video tonight? And she selected these. So the first thing I'm going to ask you, Miss Liberty, why did you choose the cheeses that you chose? Well, for this white squishy one, I usually like... Um, <laughs> Um, I use these sometimes like white squishy cheeses. And then for the blue cheese, I know that Ioni, my sister, the mm -hmm. one that did it last Friday, yep. the filming, um, she really likes this a blue cheese. And then I also just got a new one that I have no idea what the is. This is Humboldt Fog. And I just felt like maybe I should try a new cheese that I never really saw and did before. And I really like how it has like this blue line on it. Poetry. All right, so we have three cheeses tonight. I'm going to walk you through them. So according to Liberty, the white squishy cheese that we're having is a cheese teak icon. So this is honey goat. This is a cheese that if we run out of, um, our customers like get really mad, like legit mad. And they're like, how could you run out of honey goat? Um, it's that beloved and there's really no substitute for it. Um, this is a very soft, fresh chev goat cheese. Uh, with honey mixed in. So it's both sweet and tangy at the same time, and it's very soft and spreadable. Our second cheese, the one that she described as the new cheese that she has never tried before, um, with the blue vein running through the middle, is Humboldt Fog. And despite what it looks like, it's actually not blue mold running through the middle like we see in a blue cheese. Um, this is actually ash um, from sort of burned up and charred vegetables that they make into a powder and sprinkle in here. Uh, and it's really, really beautiful, but it's flavorless, uh, and it does not have the same funk uh, that a blue cheese has. A Humboldt Fog is also 100% goat's milk. Uh, and then our third cheese, our blue cheese, is called Danish Blue. Um, and this is um, creatively named Danish Blue because it is, in fact, from Denmark. Yay. Um, Danish blue is famous for being a very approachable blue. It's bright, it's fresh. The blue is pronounced, but not so blue that you're like, oh my God, I'm drowning in blueness. Uh, so it's really, really appealing. Uh, it's what we might often refer to as a starter blue because it's not too intense. Um, all right, so Liberty, what is this beautiful little accessory that we're placing on our board they tonight? They are a couple, well, a lot of slices of pear. Mm -hmm. So we just had a pear from our fridge and then my lovely cheese baby mom, just, um, she just cut them easily. If you have mm -hmm. normal pear at home, just slice it. Just slice it, right. <laughs> so we slice this into kind of like, like almost like a little deck of cards. Isn't that lovely? And then you can kind of, Ioni, I don't know, can you get down here a little bit, sweetie, and angle that, that I'm kind of like fanning it out just a little bit. I mean, this doesn't have to get like too crazy, but it looks a little bit prettier to have it fanned out some. And then tonight's um, crunchy accessory, our cracker of the evening, there are these little square crostini that I really, really love, and they have sea salt on them. Um, yeah, if, Liv, if you want to hold that up to the camera and see if Ioni can kind of get in. You got, can you see the sea salt on that, honey? Okay, so they're really nice, and they're super crunchy. Would you demonstrate the crunchiness of the crostini, please? Should I just, like, slap Oh, bite into it, girl. Bite in. That's crunchy. So they're really nice. They're neutral in flavor. Um, no, because I'll choke and cough and embarrass myself. So but hold on to that because I'll have it in a minute. So these are neutral in flavor. They've got some nice sea salt, really delicious. So this is our simple, simple cheese board for the evening, uh, crafted by my beautiful middle daughter, Ioni, um, with three cheeses that she just thought were cool from the cheese case. Oh, I just called you Ioni, didn't I? Welcome, Ioni. Why don't you come on up here again? So you there you go. So I um, famously just called my middle daughter by my oldest daughter's name, but those of you parents out there that have multiple children, you know what I'm talking about. You're lucky if maybe like 10% of the time you get the right name for the right child. So sorry, not sorry. Um, anyway, here's the cheese board that Liberty selected uh, for us this evening uh, from our Cheese Teak Cheese Cases. So Libby and I hope you all have a most outstanding weekend. Any parting words, Lib? Can I try some? 
you can try some. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.